All right there, everyone. We have the opportunity to sign a petition to grant Alex Jones White House press credentials and sit him right smack next to CNN's Jim Acosta. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. Before we begin, make sure you smack that bell and subscribe button if you haven't already done so. We are on our way to 100,000 subscribers and it'll be an absolute privilege to have you as one of them. All right, now it's time to have a little fun here. I don't know how many of you have heard about this uh, official petition on the White House website to grant Alex Jones full White House press cred credentials and sit him right next to CNN's showboat, Jim Acosta. I'll provide a link below for you to sign the petition. Uh, you do, of course, have to be a United States citizen. So if you're living outside of the U.S., just go ahead and you know send out the link to one of your American acquaintances and urge them to sign it. I think this petition really is brilliant. I think it's a perfect way of framing our critique of CNN. For example, what precisely is the difference between the conspiracy theories peddled by CNN's 24-7 ramblings about supposed Russian collusion with the Trump campaign and Trump's continued secret collusion with Putin and Russia on the one hand and any of the conspiracy theories put forward by Alex Jones on the other? I mean, what's, what's the difference between the public antics of Jim McCost in Washington, D.C. and those of Alex Jones when he recently stormed the Capitol building. Jones was accused at that time of being a showboat, a provocateur, the like. What the hell is Jim Acosta? Perhaps better we should just call him Jim Acosta because that's what he is in the end. He's a rude, obnoxious grandstander whose sole job is to disrupt, mock, and heckle the President of the United States with the full support of CNN. So I think Sitting Alex Jones right next to Jim Acosta would be brilliant, be a magnificent lived out parable, precisely the kind of pathetic propaganda machine Acosta and CNN have become. But we need to look at this a bit from a uh, wider uh, vantage point, a bigger picture here. And this wouldn't be the first time the Trump White House has kind of done something like this. I don't know how many of you remember. It was several months back. This is back when Sean Spicer was press secretary. Reporters from the BBC, CNN, the New York Times, uh, Los Angeles Times, Politico, the Daily Mail, BuzzFeed, they were all banned. They were all refused access to an off-camera press briefing by Sean Spicer. Now, of course, the New York Times and CNN, they utterly flipped out. They were livid. And this banning was on top of uh, Trump's refusal to attend the White House Correspondents' Dinner, which was basically a deliberate snub to the uh, corporatist media. So this is where you get this whole notion that Trump is opposed to democracy since the corporatist globalist media is supposedly essential to democratic flourishing. This is why you have the Washington Post pushing their new slogan on its front pages every day, democracy dies in darkness. But what the entire Trump presidency really has realized is the coming of age of alternative media. I don't know how many of you read the article just after Trump was elected president. It was entitled, How Matt Drudge Won the 2016 Election. And it underscored the influence of the alternative media on world events in 2016. But what the article pointed out was that the year of 2016 really became the coming of age moment for the alternative media. So here in the States, websites such as Drudge Report, Breitbart News, The Gateway Pundit, of course, Infowars, they received tens of millions of hits daily, billions yearly. Conservative talk radio is tens of millions of listeners daily. Fox News has topped the cable ratings now for over 200 consecutive months. I mean, that's astonishing. 200 consecutive months, although Fox looks like it's ready to commit suicide. And join the ranks of the left-wing corporatist globalist media with its support of CNN's lawsuit against the White House to uh, reinstate Jim Acosta's uh, White House uh, press uh, credentials, by uh, which was upheld, by the way, by a Trump-appointed judge. This is why Hungary and Poland have taken the measures they have to transform their court systems, because they rightly recognize the judiciary is one of the major elite institutions to be radically influenced by cultural Marxism and liberal globalization. So Trump has a lot of work to do in transforming the judiciary, and he has to be very, very careful who the heck he appoints to these positions. Regardless, this petition to grant Alex Jones White House press credentials and seat him next to Jim Acosta, I don't think can be taken as a joke. 
I don't think it should be taken as wishful thinking anymore. And that's because the alternative media really has begun to ascend to a national prominence that's making the so-called mainstream media jealous. Again, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the book by Angela Nagel. It's entitled Kill All Normies. I'll provide a link below if you'd like to grab a copy. Angela Nagel is a media scholar, and she put forward a very, very well-researched thesis for why the right came to dominate social media during the 2016 election cycle. She notes that over the last several years, he had what she called Tumblr liberals, right? These were liberals who congregated around the social network sites of Tumblr and Facebook, and they basically created a social media culture devoted to identity politics, which saw itself as the voice that excluded and the marginalized, the the social minority. Now, Nagel notes that this became a culture completely incapable of thinking beyond what she calls the cult of suffering and the incessant practice of cry bullying. And in such a world where we have terms that describe crimes against sexual and racial and physical minorities, such as misogyny and racism and sexism and ableism and all this stuff, in such a world, there's really no place for men, and particularly white men, in this cry-bullying, social justice warrior-infested cyberspace. And so, and not just men, but anyone who couldn't stand the stench of this leftist ideology, they flocked to another side of cyberspace, as it were. Particularly the message board site 4chan, of course YouTube. And it's within this cyber world that there emerged a platform for a mass blowback against this Tumblr and Facebook liberal mentality. That's her basic argument for how the right began to dominate social media. And it's not just here in the States. A number of articles have documented how the so-called far right of Europe, what we would call here simply the nationalist populist right, a number of articles have documented how this nationalist right has dominated social media in Europe, the alternative media, has been indispensable to the nationalist populist right's ascendance to European politics. And the reasons for this are just, they're rather simple. In addition to scaring away particularly white males from a number of social media platforms and forcing them to congregate around their own, you also have the complete collapse of the trustworthiness of the so-called mainstream media. Every major poll and study over the last 20 years indicates that the media's level of trustworthiness has been declining rapidly during that same time period. Perhaps the single most devastating poll of late was the one conducted by the Media Insight Project in partnership with the Associated Press. They found only 6% of Americans have a lot of confidence in the media on par with the low levels of confidence in Congress. And of course, Democrats are far more likely to trust the media than were the Republicans. But we're talking here upwards of about 95% of the polled population being completely skeptical towards the corporatist globalist media. Again, I really don't see uh, how this uh, petition to get Alex Jones in the White House press corps is beyond the realm of possibility. It seems to me that would be a perfect way for Trump to stick it to Jim Acosta and CNN, as well as that ridiculous judge who reinstated his press credentials to have him sit right next to Alex Jones, right? I mean, how freaking awesome would that be? I think it's a great way of fulfilling his promise uh, Trump's promise, that is, to begin holding big tech responsible for its politically correct, cultural Marxist-inspired censorship of right-wing channels and sites. And I think it would be a symbol of the ascent of the alternative media to the very prominence that was once monopolized by the corporatist globalist media, but no more. So I have already signed the petition, and I would urge all of you to sign it as well. Like I said, I do believe you have to be a U.S. citizen to sign it. So if you're outside of the U.S., go ahead and forward it to all of your American friends and colleagues, and, and let's see what we can uh, do with this. We'll make sure to keep our eyes on how things develop. You need 100,000 signatures. Let's give it to them. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on our Patreon link below. Become a monthly supporter of this channel. And as you know, we are periodically demonetized by YouTube. And we can really use your help so we can continue to analyze current events in light of awesome conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish.